is Tohub is a you know, technology platform that uh, enables restaurants and, and retailers to grow their business, to automate their business, uh, and it, in essence, make it easy for them to run successful and sustainable businesses, right? Yeah, so I guess the problem that we're solving uh, fundamentally is the complexity of all that a business needs to do uh, in the operational side of things uh, and in engaging, understanding their customers. Uh, so if you think about what does a business need to do in general to be successful, it's really having operational excellence, right? Making sure your uh, in, you have minimal wastage, employees are well managed, you understand your business, you know your numbers. But at the same time, it's also very important to understand your customers. Who are your customers? If you know customers, you're not going to have a business. So these are the three what I call pillars of successful businesses. Uh, run great operations, understand who your customer is, engage with them. And what we do fundamentally is to build out ways for a business to uh, really do these things very easily. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, these days, you know, one of the biggest challenges is uh, in restaurants uh, is the fact that we have a labor shortage, right? It's really hard to find people to work in the FMB industry. And so what we do is we build technology that really allows consumers, customers to walk in a store uh, instead of you know, trying to get the attention of a busy waiter, pick up their phone, scan a QR code, order, pay, complete a lot of the things that a waiter would used to have to do uh, on top of all the million and one things they're already doing uh, within kind of like just the phone itself. My first business was an e-commerce business, so I, I loved technology and so running that business was very kind of second nature for me. Uh, and when I moved to Shanghai to study Chinese and eventually traveled around China, uh, I ended up meeting a lot of interesting people. And one of them that I met was a, uh, a business owner who ran a chain of women's lingerie retail stores, actually, in China. And uh, he, he was showing me around his store. He said, you know, I've got this really cool store, I've got this factory. And he was showing me this new system that he had just implemented. Uh, and it cost him a bomb. It's like five or six hundred thousand dollars or something like that. It's really expensive. Uh, and he said, hey, why, why don't you have a look at this? And I did. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is really bad. Right? It looks like Windows 95-ish looking. Uh, it was really clunky. It was really difficult to use. And I tried to give feedback to the engineers who built it. And they just didn't want to take my feedback. And that got me really frustrated. And that was when it really occurred to me how even though I came from this e-commerce background in retail, uh, bricks and mortar retail was still largely unsupported or largely not really, uh, they don't really have many options as to what you know, companies or platforms that they could work with to really automate, help them grow their business. Uh, and so that was when I, you know, I envisioned building a company, a platform that really engaged this problem. Um, I went back to Shanghai, told my friends about this idea. One of them connected me to my current co-founder or my co-founder since the beginning, Chong Yu. And for some reason or another, we connected uh, and we just started building store hub out of my uh, apartment in Shanghai. Uh, it started out very humbly as just a simple iPad point of sale. And of course, today it's grown and evolved into an entire ecosystem of products. Um, but that was essentially how it started. Every funding round for us presents an opportunity to uh, do always two things, right? Uh, scale all the things that we've been doing well. Uh, so we imagine, you know, from the 15,000 stores we have, we would love to see that continue to grow. Uh, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 stores. Um, and secondly, how do we deepen the value that we create for our customers? Uh, when we first started out, it was just simple iPad point of sale. And the products are not created for the sake of creating more products. The products are created to enable the businesses that we are serving to really run better businesses. And the truth is, I think, you know, we're barely scratching the surface of what could be possible. I think there's so many more things that a business can benefit from uh, in terms of how they work with a platform like us. Uh, and so we're working towards investing in more technology, investing in deeper, more sophisticated ways for business to operate well, to engage their customers. Uh, we want to make sure that the platform that we have is the platform of choice for you know, successful businesses. Yeah, I think getting funding is, is a really interesting uh, and challenging concept for, for a lot of people simply because um, 
most of us come from this high power distance background, right? We, we see all the guys like who have money or you know, the guys who have power. Uh, they're like, you know, and so we treat as founders, we tend to treat investors in a very similar fashion. But the truth is, I think uh, the first and foremost thing we have to do to, uh, to basically engage this process is to understand, well, investors, what is the structure that they're running? What is a VC? What is, who are the people providing them the money to invest? What is the commercial relationship between them and their LPs, right? The, the, the limited partners of the fund. And so a lot of founders walk into a conversation with an investor without understanding how the investor even thinks in the first place, what kind of returns, promises, commercials they have already committed to with their investors, with their LPs. Um, and so we walk in there and we say, hey, you know, our company is growing at 10% year on year and we're, you know, uh, we're going to be a, a $2 million company in 10 years time. And then walk out not realizing hey, how come this guy is not interested in what I'm doing when the truth is it may not even be to, to do with anything about you as a person but simply that the business model the size of the market is, doesn't fit the kind of investment vehicle that an investor has and so I think the first thing is really to understand uh, how investor works uh, especially VCs uh, I think for us uh, one thing that was really clear to me was not to treat investors like you know how do we learn to be to engage them as, as fellow human beings as people who uh, have a particular agenda focus but at the same time uh, would make decisions not just based purely on what's on the paper most VCs and early stage investors uh, would say that they would they often invest in the founder in the, the, the story the experience the their understanding of what this person represents uh, and so for this round of funding you know it's a combination of multiple processes multiple times we've had to go through this process of sharing our story and telling our story of working through the numbers of understanding and doing the homework behind every single person that we're talking to uh, one thing that I find really really helpful is when you go into a conversation with an investor to understand like, what have they invested in why do they think the way they do? Why do they, you know, do what they do? Uh, how big is their fund? To have clarity around that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's a, it's a really intense process. Uh, it's a skill that we all have to start to learn somewhere. And uh, for us to get to this point, it's definitely not. I would not have been able to raise this round as the first year founder I was in the early days of Star. Let's put it that way. It's something that you have to learn to to do over time. The thing that's not done mostly by a lot of startups is uh, I would recommend people counter costs and the truth is for most of us when we build startups um, at least in the current understanding of the terminology it often means okay you're seeking venture capitalists as your investors uh, and that tends to bring startups down a path of having to imagine growth for the companies that they're building in a particular way oftentimes very quickly, oftentimes in a very large scale. And there is a cost attached to this, right? There is a cost attached to wanting to be the high school basketball champion versus the national basketball champion versus internationally winning a competition there. And the reality of a venture-backed startup is that it's the equivalent of at least a you know, national level basketball competition, right? You're trying to beat uh, that game and oftentimes at an international level as well because you know, VCs effectively expect us to be able to scale beyond a single market. Oftentimes it means being very clear about what kind of difficult decisions we are having to make, right? What areas of our lives we have to give up, what kind of commitments and physical discipline and emotional discipline and uh, we are committed to. Oftentimes people think only about the big dream but most people don't understand the cost associated with getting there and the cost associated with being there running a large organization of people oftentimes means that you as a person as a, as a leader would need to learn the, how to engage an organization of that size you know and all of that differences it's not something that we often think about so i would say yeah for startups out there uh understand what you're trying to build but at the same time make sure you count the costs and make sure you work on it before you get there you got to kind of like plan it a lot better